Hey guys, it's Mia Redrick here, the mom strategist. You're gonna love this scope today. Now this is going to be a fire scope. So I hope you're ready. Hey Colleen, uh, this is gonna be a fire scope. I hope that you are ready. I think I put the title in here today. I'm Mia Redrick, I'm the mom strategist and I support clients with both life and business success. You can always check me out at miaredrick.com. Do me a favor, you guys are definitely going to want to share the scope. This is going to be like one of those. It's going to be one of it's going to be one of those today, all right? I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist. I support clients with both life and business success. Hey, Latasha. You can always check me out at miaredrick.com. At miaredrick.com. Hey, Catherine, good to see you. Now, today what I'm going to be teaching on, hey Colleen, good to see you. What I'm going to be teaching on today, very simply, are 14 ways, 14, 14 ways to just flat get over yourself, all right? Now, it is going to be a tough scope, so I do want to disclaim that for those of you who are watching this scope. Um, if your feelings get hurt easily, hey May, if your feelings get hurt easily, then this is not the scope for you tonight, all right? This is going to be one of those tough scopes. Now, my only goal is to support you with moving forward um, with a strategy, a resource, a system, right, to be able to move your life or your business forward, all right? And I had a lot of time to think about it today because I've been like crazy busy. It's busy is launch time. We are reorganizing the house. There's so much going on at the same time, and I've got so much, so much to share. I've had a lot of time to think about what I want to share with everybody tonight. It's a really good one. Um, tonight, I'm going to be teaching on very simply 14 ways to simply get over yourself. Yeah, like, like really, get over yourself, all right? And I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist. I support clients with both life and business success. You can always check me out at Mia Redrick, right? <laughs> uh, no, no palm tree movement. No, I didn't do that today. I'm just in my office, we're in the sunroom, we might get a cat. That's a whole nother story. We, the cat is outside, that's all. We're rescuing a cat. This is just, that's a lot. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say about that, all right? Um, but you know what? Well, you know, life is just what it is, right? It's just like, it's always exciting. You guys know, you know, life moves fast when you have kids and they, they are compassionate beings, right? Am I talking to you? I'm talking to you. Now, you guys are going to love the scope today. I want to give people time to get on here. I was trying to see how many people are in the room, but I'm not able to see that. So I think per, uh, Periscope must have changed. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, Periscope changed how it's showing this. I like it, I like it, I like it. Okay, awesome. Have you guys seen that? If you hit the three buttons on Periscope now, it gives you broadcast details in a completely different way. It actually graphs, graphs out, maps out whatever is going on, like whoever's here, how many people are here. Do me a favor if you haven't shared already, right? Um, do me a favor already and share on Twitter, on Facebook, and on uh, Periscope. Of course, on Periscope, because we want to pack it out tonight. Um, it's going to be a great scope. I'm going to share tonight 14 ways to get over yourself. Now, I am going to shake your tree. Yeah, I am. I, I really am. I, I am. I'm going to rub your lamp. This is true, all right? But my goal is to move you forward. I hope that after you hear the scope that you're like, I got this, all right? I got this, and it will result in a change or an action that will move you forward, all right? And so I'm going to teach at first these 14 steps. Then I'm going to open the floor for Q&A, as I always do. So hang in there. If you have questions at the end or you're thinking, I want to work with you, Mia, just hang in there at the end, and I'll explain exactly what you can do to work with me, all right? So I'm going to break this down over the next, let's say, 40, 45 minutes, okay? So you need to grab your water, all right? You need to get a cup of tea, all right? I wouldn't chew anything that might make you choke because this is going to be a really good one. I just want you to know this, all right? For those of you I'm just meeting, it's nice to virtually meet you. I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist. I support clients with both life and business success. Um, I got started my business about 13 years ago, making the decision simply to go to work as myself. I just wanted to combine my background as a corporate trainer and my systems and motherhood into a business. And I've done exactly that. I've coached hundreds of clients personally. Over 113 of my clients um, have written books. Um, more than half of them, really about 80% of them, are number one Amazon bestsellers. Many of my clients are coaches and consultants, top speakers. Um, many of them earn six figures 
and more okay in their businesses and with the systems that I provided them over the years and the products that they've created as a result of us working together and what I believe and know for sure is that any single person can leverage what they know package what they know now what I'm into I know you guys turn a lot of channels here on Periscope and there's some great and amazing content but what I'm interested in is sustainable success so if you're interested in packaging your know-how your expertise your gifts your talent and your education into a product you can sell and you want sustainable success meaning when you get free you want to stay free I'm into that all right and if you're interested in like flash cash I'm not really for you all right that's not what I do all right um, that has not been my journey and I'm so grateful that when I built my business I built it properly and as a result of that I've been a full-time entrepreneur for over two decades my children have never seen their mom or dad ever work a job they're 19 15 and 12 and yep I'm telling you this because I feel really good about it you know and I think that what a great thing to build a business that's amazing and stable on a solid foundation and your children never ever have to see mom or dad work a job because they don't have to because they've learned how to build their businesses right uh, and I'm into that all right if you're into that then you're gonna love my scopes because that's what I talk about I come here two times a day usually in the mornings I do a gym scope uh, in the mornings about 10 30 11 o'clock every morning and then I come back usually in the evenings usually around this time if I don't have a coaching call and then I'll teach something business or life oriented that goes inside of my product called scope school which has over 480 over 480 life business and mindset scopes and I sell it for ninety seven dollars only a month okay you get 30 scopes each and every month all right, drip to you, and the first seven days are free, so you can always try that out. All right, but I'm gonna get started. Um, I um, was so grateful also that I had built my business um, the right way because my husband developed kidney disease eight, nine years ago. Now, I know those of you that know the story, just hang in there, because if you haven't met me, you need to know this about me. And I was grateful that we had built our businesses solid because I could be there for him. If I had built my business having to travel or speak in order for me to get clients in my business then I would be out of business when that had happened in my family but I've always built my business from the comfort of my home I work 31 hours a month servicing my clients from the comfort of my house right so uh, and that's what I teach my clients how to do also um, my husband did get a kidney transplant about three years ago and I believe the reason he did amazingly well is because we were able to hire a private doctor for him that had just 25 uh, patients and so he got an elevated level of care all right and uh, still means something to me every time I hear it right thank you so much um, and I, I, I tell you that because maybe the reason that you want to run your business is you want to be there for someone that you care about maybe it's your mom you know I was talking to someone today and their mom was 90 some years old and that's her why her why is that she wants to be there for her mom she wants to generate income so that she doesn't have to choose where she needs to be and she wants to replace her income to do that I get that I understand that or maybe you just want to give your kids an incredible education I'm totally into that uh, my husband and I've invested over seven hundred and fifteen thousand dollars in elementary middle and high school and for those of you who are saying how is that possible well it's possible if you invest in independent schools typically tuition is somewhere between seventeen thousand and thirty thousand dollars a year per child all right and you know what I wouldn't trade it for that for that for the world like giving your kids a great start if that's what you're into building a great business can provide that option for you and gives your kids a head start and it allows them to be able to you know to go into this world with a sense a solid foundation I love that right I love that uh, or maybe you want to build a business because you just want to date your husband in the middle of the day or your wife all right I get that too I love that I have freedom I go into my office 11 1130 every single day and I can do what I want to do when I want to do it all right and maybe that's what's calling you and that's why you want to build a business and I get that too all right if that's you to me building your business properly will totally allow you to do that or you know what maybe you just want to use your talents and your gifts you know and, and express a higher version of yourself that was me too like I knew I was great at what I did I worked for a fortune 100 company I loved what I did but I wanted to do that for me all right I wanted to do that 
in my own business. And I wanted to explore how I could do that. And to me, running a business, leveraging what you know, packaging your gifts, and monetizing those from the comfort of your home is a dream job. That's what I get to do every single day. And I work with people who are smart, they're sharp, they believe in self-investment, and they believe in God. And they're action takers, and they're go-givers, and they're go-getters, all right? And they're generally very positive people. That's who I enjoy working with, all right? So I'm going to get started. That's kind of the ABCs of me. I told you my whole resume, but that's the ABCs of me. And if you're watching my scopes, I want you to know... I want you to know my story because maybe my story is your story. And I want you to know it's possible. Now, you guys know how many mom coaches you met. You know how many mom strategists you've ever met. So I had a big old bodacious dream and it didn't have a name. And maybe that's you too. And sometimes when you're that thought leader, that action taker, that's what it looks like. It doesn't have a name, all right? But even if it doesn't have a name, it doesn't mean that it cannot work. And I'm, gonna, I'm a witness to that. And I support people every single day that birth their dreams and make it happen, all right? So, here we go. If you guys are ready for this scope today, I hope you're ready. Let me fan you now. Um, it's 14 ways. 14 ways to just simply get over yourself. Now, my goal today is to create that shift, right? To get you really to be in action, to overcome your excuses, to be like, you know what? I'm not even going to say this anymore because we're not listening. Like, I, no speaker English, okay? When it comes to you not getting over yourself, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Latasha is ready. Is anyone else in the house ready to hear today? Is anyone else ready to receive? Because if you are, just say, I'm ready, me, all right? And I'm ready to get started, all right? 14, 14 ways to get over yourself, all right? All right, all right, we've got two people who are ready. Anybody else ready for the scope today? All right, come on now, bring it, come on now. I'm going to bring you great content. You guys, this is called interaction, all right, here we go. The first thing that I want you to get over, um, get over, okay, the very first thing I want you to get over is that you are not smart enough, all right? Yeah, okay, well, I, yep, I wanted to start right there, okay? Um, that you are not, hey, Renetta, um, that, you're not, you, that you're not smart enough, okay? And so this idea that you need to go back to school, you need to get this certification, that what you know right now, you can't stand on your gifts, your talent, your skills, your background already, that you're not smart enough, that what you bring to the table, even though you're great and amazing at what you do professionally every single day, people are always telling you, or how much you've helped them and supported them. But there is something inside of your mind that is a limiting belief. And I'm calling you out if this is you. All right. And you're believing you are not smart enough. And as a result of that, you won't execute. You know what I'm talking about. You won't execute. So every time someone says, when are you going to do this or that? Your dream. Live your dream. Start your coaching business. Start up your business. Right. You can't answer it. Because you, in the recesses of your mind, you don't believe that you are smart enough. And so you keep coming up with these list of things that you need to do to get ready, to get ready to launch. And if that's you, I just want to call you out, all right? And I want you to get over yourself. I want you to understand that what we need you to do, we need you to stand on your gifts. I need you to stand on your story, right? Right? That's crazy, right? Ex exactly. Belief system. Here's the thing. I need you to stand on your talents. I need you to stand on your gifts. I need you to stand on your experience. And if you can't see it, if you can't see it, meaning right here, you can't see it in your mind's eye, then I need you to write it down, all right? I need you to write down what is the truth so that you can read it. And I think so often we think I'm not smart enough, and yet I want you to just start writing down what did you accomplish? What did you do? All right? And when you start looking at those things and reading them and saying them aloud, I want you to say, I am. I am smart enough. I am capable enough, all right? And change the language of the story. Nobody's listening. No one's listening. So this idea that you can't launch in your dream, you can't execute the plan because you're not ready or you keep getting ready. Maybe you're in that state of getting ready because in your mind, somebody told you when you were two years old, four years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, for, you know, 21 years old, that you are not smart and you chose to believe them instead of looking at the proof that's in your life. I hope that you're hearing me if this is you, all right? And the time is now. I want you to understand we need you to get over yourself, okay? You guys with me? That's number one. Number one is that 
this idea that you're not small and smart enough. It's not true. All right. Nobody's believing that. All right. It's not real. All right. And the only way that you're going to understand that it's not real is just write it out for yourself. Write out the things that you've done and start saying them aloud every single day. All right. Until you believe it. All right. That's number one. All right. Number two. Number two. The second way I want you to get over yourself is that you know this, oh my goodness, I get so tired of hearing this, that you're not supported enough. You know what I'm talking about. You know, your husband doesn't support you enough. Your wife doesn't support you enough. You know, nobody's making room for you. Your co-worker, they're not supporting you enough. You're the one carrying the weight. You are the one. You've got the anchor. You know it's you, all right? And no matter what environment you go into, whether it's your home environment, your work environment, your volunteering, in the church, it always comes down to you saying that you are not supported enough. You're the one you've got to hold up the world. And one of the things I want you to understand is that we need you to let that go. All right. All right. We need you to get over yourself. I need you to understand that the reason that you do that is so that you can have a sense of importance about who you are and what you're doing and, and what you're bringing to this world. But there's another way to keep score. Are you ready to keep score in a different way? I hope you are. All right. And I want you to understand that one of the most empowering things that you could ever do is one delegate, you know, delegate something to someone else that can allow them also to grow. All right. And give you room to do the things that you're really meant to do. And there's so many people that hide, you know, there are not that many hearts, but there's so many of us that we hide behind the things, you know what I mean? That keep us busy so that we don't have to go for the things that we are meant to crush in our life. And you know, I'm telling you the truth. I'm busy with that. Then you don't have to face your fear and go for that thing you're really supposed to go for. And I want you to, if this is you, all right, if you're not, if you're not, you know, feeling supported enough because every time you look around in your world, you keep saying, I'm the one, I got to do this. Like, I can't not do this. These people need me and all of these things. And as a result of it, you can't be there for you. I want you to look at right now, what can you let go of? Who can you ask in your world that can support and help you? Like, who can you just say, listen, I can't do this, right? The moment you say, I can't do it, you can't do it. All right. And decide, I'm not going to do it. And, and I, I need to resign. I, I need someone to support me to do this. Can you, honey, can you do this or that? All right. When you start to change your language around not being supported, you'll find that people will show up and start to support you. All right. And so this idea that it's only you, that it's all going to fall apart. You know, guys, you know, I'm calling you out that it's all going to fall apart if you don't take the leap. If you don't take that action, it's not real. It's illusion. It's allowing you to stay stuck. And it's the reason why you don't have room to go for that thing that will to totally and absolutely fulfill you. Now, somebody say amen if that's you. Now, here's the thing. I wanted to break this down tonight. My only goal is to support you. I want to support you with getting over yourself. This idea that it's just you. You know, these beliefs that keep us stuck, that keep us from executing, going for the big dream, these beliefs that make us so incredibly selfish, it's with our family because they never get to know all of who we are because we don't know who we are because we won't go for the thing. You guys know what I'm talking about. You're quiet tonight, but I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. Number one. Just to recap, you are smart enough. I want you to get over this fact that you are not smart enough, that you need another certification. You need another class. You need another something in order for you to go for the thing that you're already ready for and you're doing already. All right. Number two, find a way to do it. All right. No matter what. Number two, number two, I want you to get over yourself as a result, as it relates to not feeling supported. My husband's not supporting me. My kids aren't supporting me. I'm going to give you a great example. I remember when Pat was on dialysis. So this was a hit or miss. Like he might be feeling well. It's a very supportive dad. Or he might not been, have been feeling well. And I remember thinking like there were things I wanted to do in my own business. And I had to create support for myself. All right. Independent on whether or not he might be feeling well or not feeling well. So I decided that I would put a system in place for me, which was have the sitter come over no matter what, no matter if he was available or not available, because I needed something I could count on and stand on. And a lot of you guys, the reason you don't feel supported is because you won't take a stand for yourself and put the systems in place. And you're using things that you can't count on, right? As your primary support. So you can hide behind those things and say, see, I was going to go and do this thing. You know what I mean? But 
this happened or that happened. Thank you so much. This happened or that happened. And as a result of it, you couldn't execute. I want you to share, please, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Periscope, because we already know that other people will be blessed by the scope today. And if you haven't shared, please share, all right? Right now on Twitter, on Facebook, and of course on Periscope. On Periscope, all you guys should be sharing right now. This is going to be a firecracker scope. We've only gotten to number two. I've got 14 ways that I want you to get over yourself right now. Make sure you share, all right? Number three, number three, number three, all right? Number three, the third way I want you to get over yourself, thank you so much is that you were not given, that you were not given the opportunities. You know, you weren't given the same opportunities, right? And and let me tell you why you need to get over yourself with this, all right? You know, you know you heard this story. You, the reason that you like saying these things is because it allows you to compare your lack story. So you get to say that the reason you don't get to show up for you is because you didn't get to start the same as someone else. I want you to hear me on that. So the reason that you like that story, being able to say, you know, you weren't given the same opportunities as all these other people. And as a result of that, you know what I'm saying? Someone needs to make concessions for you. What I want you to understand is that nobody's believing that, all right? And that what you're doing is comparing your lack. You're comparing what you don't have, what you didn't get. And, 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 and you're saying as a result of that, you're justifying your place. But I want you to understand that there is another place for you, all right? And that the fact of the matter is that even if you weren't given the same opportunities as someone else, you still have the ability to use what you have, all right? And this idea of framing your life by looking and comparing what other people have, she has a husband and I don't have a husband. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, you, you get what I'm saying? Uh, oh, man, he, she, he has a great wife and I don't have a great, I don't have that, okay? Or they have resources and I don't have those resources. You will never get to where you want to be looking at someone else's story and comparing it to resources that are not available to you. If you want to change your life, all right, and you want to get over yourself in this moment, you got to look at what you have and you got to use what you have. And the moment that you start to frame your life based on looking at what you have, be in gratitude about what you do have, right? You're breathing? Okay, great. You write? Okay, fantastic. You can speak? Okay, yeah. Like English? Okay, perfect. All right? And when the moment that you start to look at your life and frame your life using the things that you have instead of comparing yourself to other people and what they have, your, your life will be better. You need to get over yourself. And if this is you, if this is your story, and you've been sucking the story over and over and over again, no one wants to hear it, all right? I just want to tell you because maybe you've been telling your best friend, maybe you've been telling your aunt, your mother, the fact is that you're looking at, I'm a single mom. Like You're like, I'm a single mom. Like, you know, they have help. I don't have help. Look at what you have. Use what you have. All right? Because what you don't have is not yet available to you and you probably don't need it. Stand on your story. Oh, I don't have as much money or resources. Use what you have. You got $100? Invest it in something that can create a return. You know what I mean? You've got $500? Invest it in something that can create a return for you in your life. And here's the thing. This is where people get this flat twisted. You know, the fact of the matter is a lot of times people think in order for you to create great and amazing things, you got to have a whole lot of things. That's not true. But you got to be able to value the things that you do have. And there are people who are sitting on gold mines every single day, right? Because they are stuck in that story and you just need to get over yourself. You're believing that, you know, you don't have enough because you're not in gratitude about all the abundance that is available to you every single day. The talent, the skill, you know what I mean? The network, the connections, the references, the testimonials, your path, your journey, all of those things, you can leverage those things if you can see them. But if you can't see them because you're not in gratitude about them and you are comparing what you have to what somebody else has, I'm telling you, you need to get over yourself if that's you. And I hope that that has supported somebody out there um, who's dealing with that. I told you it was going to be a tough scope today, number four. We're number four. I hope you guys are getting value. If you're getting value, say, I'm getting value, Mia, all right? Number four, number four, today I'm talking about 
14 ways, 14 ways to simply get over yourself, all right? And I'm breaking it all the way down. As you guys know, Angel, I'm breaking it all the way down. Like, it's like, it's a fire scope today. All right, number four, number four. All right, <laughs> my, we don't have time to look at someone else's journey. I'm getting big value, Mia. I'm getting value. All right, you're getting value. Awesome. All right, so 14 ways to get over yourself. Number four. Fred, this is a fire scope today. Number four is that you don't have enough time to do what you love. Guess what? So you don't commit. All right. So, you know, I'm calling you out now. You need to get over yourself. If you're that person that, you know, you're so busy, you're so you're incredibly busy. Let's let's just be clear, you know, between the kids, between your home, between work, between your hobbies, between the things that you're volunteering for. You're just so incredibly busy, but you've got this dream that's inside of you and you allow that busyness to be a distraction to keep you from your purpose and your calling. And I just want to call you out if this is you see fear is an interesting thing. See, fear at times, we can use distraction, right? We can use the things that distract us to keep us away from the things that are calling us, all right? And I just want to break that down if that is you. And I want to say to you, you need to get over yourself. This idea that you're too busy, right? Too busy to lead, you know what I mean? To change your life. Like you're too busy to implement the thing that will make a difference. Meaning if you are sitting in a place right now in your life and in your business and you're like, this is not enough. I am too smart for this. I don't have, you know, you're, you can't cover month to month. You know what I mean? You're, you're counting every penny that's coming in that somebody else is predetermining for you what you get what you're worth. All right. And you're like, man, I don't have enough to do the things that I want to do. And you too, you're too busy. You don't have enough time to invest in so in something that can create a difference for you and your family. Let me go all in on this for you for a minute. All right. And I want to say this in love for those of you who say I'm doing everything in my world for my family. It's all for my kids. It's all about them. It's not all about them. It's all about you. All right. And I want you to understand that when fear steps in at times, we get distracted. We can hide behind these things. You know, you guys aren't saying anything, but we can hide behind busyness right? We can hide behind the things, our brokenness. We can hide behind the things that bruised us in the past. Maybe you tried to start a business. It didn't work. Now you're bruised. Your feelings are hurt. So instead of that, you're just kind of busy and you're like, I'm too busy to get started when really you are afraid. And if that is you, I want to call you out. The fact of the matter is it's time for a change, right? And you need to get over yourself. If you don't have enough dollars or resources to be able to do the things that you want to do in your family and you're not willing to make time and, and con commit time and energy to change your life come on let's get real all right get over yourself and you need to come to uh, you need to come to Jesus you need to figure out for yourself what is this really about all right. It's not about being busy. It's about being afraid. Right. I'm just calling you out. If that's you, let me fan myself. I wanted to break it all the way down today. What I'm teaching on very simply are 14 ways that you need to get over yourself. Now, what I've covered already, number one, is that this idea that you're not smart enough. You need to go to another class, another school, get another certification, all of these things before you can launch this thing that's called a dream. All right. That's you quit that and let's go get in action. Number two, um, that you're, you weren't supported enough, right? Like, you know, that you're, that you're not supported enough. Like Fred, this is what people were saying. You know, my husband doesn't support me. My, my, my wife isn't supporting me. You know what I mean? I don't, I, I just have no support. And the fact of the matter is you are using that as a shield so that you don't have to create the system of support for yourself. If you want it bad enough, you'll create a system of support. I gave you guys my example. When my husband was on dialysis. I had to say, how can I get it done? No matter what's going on in our world. All right. What about you? All right. When do you take a stand for yourself in that way? All right. And stop using these things as an excuse. Right. All right. I am. I am tough love today. Number three. All right. You need to get over yourself it, that you weren't given the opportunities, you know, the same opportunities as everyone else. And the reason that you're saying that is because you keep comparing your lack. 
All right? Because you're not in gratitude and appreciation for what you do have. What you need to do is stop thinking about what you do have and being thankful for those things and knowing what those things are. And the moment that you say, man, you know what? You don't, you won't be thinking and framing your life by what you don't have. You're like, man, I can write. I can read. I can write a book. I can, you know what I mean? I, I can talk on the phone. I can close sale. You start thinking about what you have. You can do telecalls. You can do webinars. Now it's the easiest time ever to start a business, all right? So many incredible tools. You don't even need a whole lot of money to get started in business if you're willing to be consistent. So if you're that person who keeps saying, I can't build a website, you don't even need a website to build a business today. I'm just breaking it down. Live stream is free, okay? All right, number four, number four, all right? Um, the fourth way I want you to get over yourself is that, you know, you don't have enough time, right? To do what you love, you know, because you got all these things. So you don't commit to anything, and you know that the issue is that you've got you you know you you you're phobic around your commitment. You know that you're hiding. You know that you're really afraid to commit because maybe you're afraid of failing. Maybe you're afraid of failing again because you failed before. Or maybe you're afraid of being judged. But you need to call that out for what it is, and you need to get over your self. All right, nobody's buying it anymore. Get over yourself. All right, over. Okay, number five. If you haven't shared yet on Twitter, on Facebook, on Periscope, please do. Number five. All right. The fifth way you need to get over yourself is, oh my goodness, oh goodness. You don't have the right training to write a book. Fred, they might be saying that. You guys need to look Fred up to write a book, to launch your course, right? So you can feel better, you know what I'm saying, about not executing, you know what I'm saying, about being inconsistent, about not being in action, all right? So there, there are those of us who, you know, we just need to get over this fact that you keep saying, you know what, I don't have the right expertise or training. I'm, I'm good at this, but I don't know how to do this or that. All right. And so as a result of that, you stay stuck in that, right? You stay stuck in that story when it's not real. Okay. Every single day, people get the right training. Okay. Every single, every single day, people get the right training and they get over that. All right. And so what you need to understand, if this is you and you keep saying, I don't know the right course, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't know how to launch my coaching program. I don't know how to write my book called Fred, write your words, right? Fred, put your emojis up. I don't know how to, you know, you don't know how to, whatever it is. There are already people out here who have done it. And the truth of the matter is you already know that you need to get over yourself. You know, it's not about not knowing it's about something else. It's about you not believing in yourself enough to invest in yourself. All right. Meaning invest with the resources in, in resources, tools, right? Invest with coaches, right? Trainers, write a check for you for your growth so that you can get done the things you want to get done. And that maybe you spend more money on a handbag. Yep, you knew I was going to go there. More money on a handbag than you're willing to invest in your dream, right? So you can get that book done. So you can get your courses up. And if this is you, you've got a priority problem. You don't have an issue around, you know, not having the right training. Your priority are off. If you're buying lunch out every single day and, and you don't, you know what I mean? At the end of the month, you don't have what you need and you don't invest in what you need with, you know what I mean? Instead of eating, when you can pack your lunch, come on, you've got a priority issue. And I want them to break it all down and say, look, you need to get over yourself. All right. I just want to call it out. If this is you, thank you so much. Right. Um, you know, I just want to call this out if this is you, because, you know, often we say, look, I, you know, I just don't know. I, you know, I don't know. I would do it, but I don't know. Then I, and I usually ask clients, I say, well, tell me, what did you do? Like, this is your passion, your dream, this thing you've been thinking about all your life. You've just got to do it. And tell me what, what steps did you take to find out how to make these things work? No steps, no action. No real resources to get you closer to where you want to be. So the question is, is that real? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Is it real? All right. And I just want to break that down for you. Thank you so much. I just want to break that down for you. If that is you, because if it were real, your priorities would be in alignment with what you're saying. And if your priorities are not in alignment with what you're saying, then it's not real. And if that's the case, I just want to call you out and shake your shoulders. All right. Number six, number six, the sixth way 
that you need to simply get over yourself is, oh my goodness, that you don't have enough experience to launch, right, or to break through. Now, this is something I hear all the time. There's so many people who believe that, you know what, I just don't have enough, you know, I don't have enough experience yet. You know, like, I mean, how could I be an expert? How can I, you know, travel around the world and, 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 and share my opinion? How can I write for this publication? How can I be on this television show? How can I take the stage and, and, you know, and command that audience? How could I talk to this particular demographic? And, you know, when people say that to me, what I understand is that you need to get over yourself. You don't know who's you are. The moment that you start talking about how could I do these things? How is it that I, well, you know what I mean? How little old me, how could, how could you not? If you understood who you are, all right, you would understand that the power that's inside of you. And I want to tell you, I, I want to go there with you for a second. And I want to tell you to get over your stuff. There are lots of people who walk around and they say, you know, they, they say that they're clear about spiritually who they are and, and who they're connected to, right? They're saying that God is a source in their life and that God is their number one. You know what I mean? Like God is their number one source of guidance, divine guidance in their life. But when you Here's something like this, right? And you feel like you are not enough to launch, to be, to do the things that you know you can do and be. All right. My question to you is then you don't know who you are. All right. And you need to get over yourself and get reacquainted. And some people, instead of just carrying that great, amazing book, you need to read it. All right. You need to understand. All right. That, you know, Inside of you are the seeds of greatness. And the fact of the matter is you have to believe that. And if you don't believe that, you can't stand on that. And and, and I, I want to break it down. You know, so the moment maybe you're a little uncomfortable being around people who, who do own it, right, who own their bigness, right, who rock. It like a giant, you know what I'm talking about. And the fact of the matter, when you're in a company, in in the company of people who are flat crushing that, you get a little uncomfortable. And it's because you don't know who you are. Because the moment that you know who you are, you understand that being in the company and among other giants is a very comforting thing. In fact, it's confirmation. But when you don't know who you are, you feel a little insecure. You know what I mean? You you feel uncomfortable being around people who are living out the their dream, right? They're just following the plan. They just read the book and interpreted it and believed, right? They believed it, that they could receive it. And therefore they have it. What about you? All right. I didn't make it up. All right. It's in the book that I read and I recommend that you read it too. Number, number eight, number eight, or maybe it's number seven, number seven, number seven, the seventh way that you need to get over yourself is, oh my goodness gracious, okay, is that you can't mastermind or associate with certain types of folks, right? Because you, you don't have enough, like you don't belong there. You know what I'm saying? You, you're not part of that club. You're not, you know what I mean? You're not wealthy enough. You didn't make enough money. You didn't, your launch didn't do six figures or you didn't hit seven figures. And as a result of that, you, you know, you need to get over yourself. This idea that you can't go in places where giants are because you haven't yet walked their path, how do you get there? You got to understand the only way that you will get there is you've got to be among giants to speak the language to, you know what I mean? You, you know, you got to be among them. All right. To enjoy them, to learn from them. And this idea that people are not hungry about being in the company or associating with people that can make you stretch and grow. I'm telling you, you need to get over yourself and you need to understand that insecurity is like one of those things. It will, it will have you sitting in a corner sucking your thumb. I want you to understand that that's a good kind of discomfort. That's a great kind of dis-ease being in, a, in the company of people who have done things, you know what I mean, that you have never done. Being among people who are in a position to bless you because they've got abundance. They've got overflow. And so many people spend a lot of their time, most of their time, with people who they're comfortable with, who are not in a position to be able to bless you and to help you. Your association, I'm telling you, is... It's, it's like, um, it's the, one of the most amazing things that you can have in your life, but it's gotta be something that you believe you deserve. All right. And for those of you who really struggle being a part of high level masterminds, getting around bigger circles, you know, people of influence, because you're like, ah, 
you know, they're probably, and you, you're dealing with, see, you know, it's not real because you've not gone there. So anything that you're talking about, about the giants that you see, right? Cause you're a giant too. The fact of the matter is it is not real. It's all illusion because until you sit among the giants, all right, the thing is you don't know what they're saying. All right. I'm just breaking it down, Fred. I'm just breaking it all the way down. All right. And if you are one of those people that what's holding you back is the fact that every single week in your networking, you're, you're hanging out with these folks. They're not in a position. They're not selling. They're not growing. All right. And therefore you're not growing, but you're comfortable. You feel really good. You like the, you know, you like the snacks, you right. You like whatever was going on there, but the fact that it's not growing you. All right. And, and this is why when you look at your life right now, you say, who am I associating with? Those folks that have been in that same room for the last seven years and none of them have grown their business more than 5% or the idea of growing their business is trying to sell to the same group of people all the time. I just want to call you out if that's you. I also want to say this to those of you in your marriage, in your relationship, that maybe you don't like where you are in your marriage and, and you're not getting around people who have elevated relationships in their marriage that can model for you what it looks like. Sure, it's going to be uncomfortable, but that's where the growth is and that's where you can learn all right and for those of you who haven't gotten that yet and you still are hanging out with your friends or your girlfriends instead of hanging out with people that can allow you to grow in your relationship it's why you are where you are there are no hearts but I wanted to break that all the way down for those of you dealing with that all right and you need to get over yourself you need to understand that your association is what can change your life all right. And you need to learn to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. How about being in the room and not speaking the language, like, but learning the language, like learning to love the language. How about being in the room and not being in judgment about being uncomfortable? How, it's like an amazing thing because it's called growth. All right. And it's really important. I just want to break it down for those of you who are dealing with that. Number eight, number eight. All right. The eighth way that you need to get over yourself the eighth way is, oh my goodness, all right, is that maybe you're feeling like you need to duplicate others because you're insecure about your own voice. I am going to go all in on this, okay? Now, let me just break this down for you for a second. Here's the reality, all right? You have a voice, all right? And it's only your voice. You get to stand on that. It's amazing if you can see it as such, all right? And there are so many people today that don't get this. They don't get it. The, the, the idea of being a creative duplicator is not creative, guys. It's like, it's not creative, all right? God has given you. He has given you you, all right? And what I want you to understand is that there are people out here that only you can touch. They are waiting for you to show up 100% as you. And the reason that people do not use their own voice is because of insecurity. You don't believe that you are enough, okay? And I want you to know that you are enough. Now, this idea, I love admiration. I love it. You know what I mean? I, I Listen, I'm like Lionel Richie's biggest fan. If you guys don't know anything about me, that's I just want you to know that. Like, I'm his number one fan. Like, like really, okay? But the fact of the matter is, there's no one that can sing Lionel Richie songs like Lionel Richie. No one writes like Lionel Richie, but Lionel Richie. I, I don't care, all right? And you, you have that too for you. And, I, you know, I always say this like, you know, the most secure people I know in the world are people who have learned to trust themselves and love themselves enough to be themselves. And if this is not you at this moment, if you find that in order for you, before you do anything, like before you can launch something in your own business, you got to see what somebody else is doing. You know what I mean? Before you can sell something, you know, you got to hear somehow somebody else said sells it before somebody, before you can launch a Facebook ad, you got to see how somebody else wrote it. I want you to understand that's the wrong come from. There is nothing flattering about, to you, about not being you. To me, it dishonors God. Like, are you kidding me? Will you guys get me? I want you to get over yourself. This idea that your voice doesn't matter, this idea that you aren't credible and amazing, this idea that, that, that what is inside of you will not work, that I, this idea that there's only one way to work, this idea that anyone else's gifts are better than the ones that you've been given and blessed with. It is not true. It is not real. Okay. And the only person perpetuating that lie is you. All right. 
I need you to get over that. All right. I want you to understand that. All right. And you know, the fact of the matter is like people make a lot of money off of people operating like that. Like, like today, you guys know what I'm talking about. Like today, if you are insecure and you don't know who you are and whose you are, you're going to get taken. All right. Because there are lots of people who are speaking to that very part of yourself, that that uncertainty, that that lack of authenticity, the fact that you feel that who you are and what you bring to the table is not enough and that there is just one way to make it. I'm telling you, it's not true. All right. And yeah, yeah. The truth of the matter is you can create a lot of success being a creative duplicator, but you can't create security from around that emotional security. All right. So you can make money, but you'll always be emotionally insecure because the reality is you never learn to trust you and your voice. And I want to challenge you. I want to call you out if that's you. And I want you to understand that I want you to get over yourself. All right. I want you to get over yourself. Number 10, number 10. All right. I want you to get over yourself. If you feel like you have to fight to prove yourself, although you're not in a battle, right? except with inadequate demons. Now, uh-oh, like, yeah, I had to go there. I'm like, let me go here, all right? I'm going to break this all the way down. If you guys have not shared this on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Periscope, please do, because this is going to support some people out here, all right? So here's the thing. If <laughs> you need to get over yourself, if you feel like you need to fight everywhere you go, you got to scrap. You got to push. You know what I mean? You, you know, I'm going to show them. Like, you know what I mean? If, 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 if your achievement is always tied to proving to someone else how that you're awesome, I want to tell you right now that you are in a battle, right, with inadequate demons. And you need to do the work on your mindset. You are fighting you. You're not battling with anyone else. You're not scrapping with anyone else. You're not du duking, right? You're not duking anyone else. The reality is that you are in a battle of your own mind, all right? And the fact of the matter is you need to get over yourself. You got to understand that about yourself. You guys know what I'm talking about. You've met people that no matter what is going on, they can't accept great things. They, they, they had to scrap to get there. You know what I mean? You're like, you're not even scrapping anymore. You're like, you're not struggling. Like, what is the problem? All right. And they always talk about the fact, the fight, the climb, the, you know, how hard it is. And it's like, you still, is it still hard? You still, you know what I mean? You still pulling up. All right. And they can never enjoy the journey. And this is why, because they're battling inadequate demons. And that's a, a demon that makes you feel inadequate about yourself. And typically it lives right here in your mind. It's what you're telling yourself, all right? The Battlefield of the Mind is a really powerful read. If you guys haven't read that book, uh, I always tell my clients to read what to say when you talk to yourself. And the challenge with this, all right, you guys are kind of quiet. I hope you're hearing me on this. But the challenge with this is that when you're always in a battle, all right, even when nobody else is fighting with you, all right, the, the, when you're always in a battle and you're always scrapping, you can never really be able to embrace fully all the great and amazing things and it, or even who you are. All right. I want you to understand that because you don't believe you deserve those things. So part of that battle is to push away, is to push away the things that will serve your highest good. It might be to push away love or push away support or push away joy, push away happiness. And you got to understand when you're battling something like that, inadequacy, you, it's difficult to accept those higher vibration types of things into your life. I'm just breaking this down. All right. You guys know it. You've seen it. We We've all seen it. You're like, what, what, what is the problem? Like what exactly, why can't you find happiness? Right? Late coming. Right? This is good, right? Like what, how can you not find a way to be joyful? You living in this nice house. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is the problem? Exactly. Like, okay. All right. All right. I understand that happened five years ago. I get that happened 10 years ago, but the fact of the matter is that it, you have to fight. You're still in the fight of having to prove yourself because you feel inadequate and it, it just, it's just in your mind. 
All right. And as a result of that, all those things that you really, truly deserve, you know what I mean? You can't embrace those things because you don't feel you deserve those things. You got to do the work. All right. You got to do the work. All right. It means that you're likely fighting with people that aren't fighting with you. All right. Because because of how you see yourself. All right. And if this is you, I want to call you out and say you need to get over yourself. All right. Is it church right now? All right. You need to get over yourself. All right. Because everybody's looking around like they're looking at you like, uh, I didn't say anything. Did you say something? I didn't say it. Did you say I didn't say anything? What you're hearing. All right. You got to understand what you're hearing is based on your own esteem. All right. And if you're hearing crazy stuff and fighting with people everywhere you go, check your esteem. Check it. All right. All right. Get over yourself. All right. Number 11 or maybe 10, number 10, number 10. All right. Number 10, the 10th way that you need to get over yourself. Okay. Oh my goodness. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Is that, is that you don't have the money. You, you don't have the money. Oh my goodness. You know, you don't have the money and lack has defined everything in front of you. You know, I had to go there. All right. So you need to get over yourself. Now, if you're one of those people that before you say yes to anything, first thing you talk about is what you don't have. Oh, you know what I mean? Anything you want to do is framed by what you do not have. All right. Lack. All right, lack. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't have it. I, I, I don't have it. I, I don't have it. And maybe you say it in a lot of different ways, all right? But the fact of the matter is everything comes back to scarcity. And if you define your bigness by your smallness, you will live small. You understand what I'm talking about, all right? And so you need to get over yourself, right? And what it can look like many times is, and I see it a lot of times with people who... Um, you know, uh, in their life, like, you know, you know, they're so frustrated by the life that they have created, you know, beyond, it's not the, the dream that they thought, you know, and as a result of that, they, they are so frustrated that they're in that frustration. And every time they want to do something, they always think, but I don't have it, you know, and I, I don't, I don't have it. And, and the thing is, they're not even trying to get it. What you got to understand is that, that there are people who don't have it also, right? Yes. The best way to get over ourselves uh, is stop taking all those selfies. Oh, that's so funny. Okay. Uh, that's funny, 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 funny. Okay. But um, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Okay. But um, you got to understand that there are so many people who are, you know, that before they say yes to themselves, they say no 10 times. All right. And if you're one of those people and you define what you want in your life, by what you can't have, then you'll never be where you want to be. It's just simple as that. I was telling someone today um, who wanted to invest with me, and and you know it all it boils down to money. You know it all. It, listen, it comes down to money. All right. And the fact of the matter is, when you get to that place, and you can get to a place in your life where you say, "How can I make it work?" or "What can I do to have what I want?" or you know, what are my possibilities or what is on the table? How can I make this work? All right. When life becomes non-negotiable around the things that you want, you got to go find the money. And I was telling, I was telling them that, you know, I said, this is, this is the, the reality is that investing in yourself is never a decision that in comfort, the moment that you're investing in yourself in comfort all right, you're not making you you're investing in something you can walk away from. I'm telling you right now. When you are talking about going deep and investing in something that is huge, like you know what I mean, a huge investment. I this year I invested in a coach, coach is hundred thousand dollars a year. I paid a coach twenty five thousand dollars a quarter. Let me just tell you, all right, when you are investing in someone and you're investing a hundred grand in a coach. All right, you're going to show up differently. Your expectations of you show up differently. You, you're going to show up on the call. Like, you're going to do your homework. All right? And so many people invest very small. And as a result of that, um, it's because of their lack. See, they invest in things that are comfortable. And that's why you haven't done the things that you want to get done. Because they, it, your investment, you can walk away from it. You know, it, it's not significant enough to make you change or do the things you want to do. And I just want to call you out if that's you and tell you, you need to get over yourself. This, this idea that you want to change your life and not invest in it at a high level. You want to live at a high level, invest at a high level. All right. And there's so many people that I would say they broke at a higher level, right? They look good. They smell good, 
but they're broke at a high level. And part of that has to do with this idea that, you know what, I don't have money to invest in my dream and that you define everything by what you do not have. And if that's you, I want to call you out. All right. I want to tell you, you need to get over yourself. Like really every single day I watch people. I mean, I had a client, I don't want to say her name. A lot of you guys know her name. I had a client who had $807 in her bank account and wanted to work with me in a program that's $10,500. Okay. And we're on a call and she's like, I, like, I only have, you know, $807. And I said, well, you got to go find the money. All right. And you know what? She found the money, paid me that night, paid me that night, did a payment plan, all right, has made over $36,000 in two months, okay, $36,000 in two months, all right. I have a client I talked to two days ago, she won't mind me saying her name, Tawanda, and two days ago, I, and I'm talking to her, she made an investment herself, she was scared, she had not ever made $10,000. $500 investment herself. And you know how much she's made in six months? $116,000. $116,000. Was it convenient? No. Did it scare her? Yes. She told every single person I'll come in, I was scared. Like, she's like, I'm going to do this, but she was scared. And the fact of the matter is, absolutely, Colleen, the, the fact of the matter is, what about you? All right, this idea that you keep saying what you don't have and nobody wants to hear it. Like, nobody's believing it. All right, people who want what they want, commit to what they want. Commit to the change you want. And yes, that's going to require monetary investment. And if that is you, I just want you to know that you need to get over yourself. You need to understand that. All right? All right, I just want to break it down. Number 11. Number 11. I hope you guys are getting value. All right. Uh, another way you need to get over yourself is that, oh my gosh, you need stuff, you need stuff, stuff, all right, to be loved, to be accepted, to be respected, all right, to be appreciated, or as proof that you are valuable, amazing, and awesome, and you don't, all right? And this is for those of you, you know, you just try, you got to let folks know, you know what I mean? You got to let people know, you know, and, and, and this is, you know, you, if you guys watch my scopes and I hope you have, I hope you guys watch them all the time and I hope you come back over and over again. Um, you know, one of the things I always say, you know, you don't have to prove who you are, be who you are. All right. The proof is in the being. All right. And yes, there should be evidence. If you're a coach and you say you help people become bestsellers, you should be like Fred and you should have bestsellers that somebody could talk to or see. All right. But this idea that you need stuff, stuff, things, you know what I'm talking about? Things to define you. All right. So that you can be loved, feel loved, be accepted. You know what I'm saying? You're already accepted. All right. To be respected. Uh, listen, respect yourself. Okay. To be accepted. You're already accepted. You don't need to buy your way into anything. All right. It's just not necessary or as proof that you are awesome and amazing. And I want you to understand this. You are awesome and amazing. All right. And that has nothing to do with your stuff. And I know that you guys have all experienced this, you know, growing up where you always saw people, they had to have, you know, the top designer thing or the top car or the, you know, in order to prove. And often when we do that is because inside of ourselves, we don't feel good about ourselves. And I want to call you out if this is you. And I want to tell you, get over yourself. I want you to understand that things don't make you happy. At the end of the day, you cannot hug money. All right. Create things that you can stand on, build the legacy for yourself and for your family because it'll make all the difference. And I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is just flat real. At the end of the day, I work with tons of folks that make a lot of money. All right. I, you know what? All of my friends, we make a lot of money. And one of the things I've learned over the years is that you can't hug money. All right. Money doesn't fulfill you. All right. And you know, it, it, at the end of the day, the things that are substantive are the things that are real. All right. And anyone that requires you to, in order for you to be a part of their world, to prove that to them, you know what I'm saying? We've all had friends that have, you know, required those kinds of things. They're not, 
then it's not coming from a real place, all right? So I just want to call you out if that is you, and I want to say, get over yourself, all right? Um, you know, I I didn't even make this up. I mean, in the book that I read, it says, you know, that that your 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 treasures are not going to be in a storehouse. Like, your treasures are not going to be things like that, okay? All right? You understand what I'm talking about? I hope you guys are hearing me. And if you hear me, say, I hear you, Mia. All right? I hear you, Mia. I just wanted to break this down today. It was a message that I wanted to share. All right? Thank you so much. Number 13. It's a long scope, right? We're almost done. Number, the, the, or maybe number 12. I don't even know. Number 13, okay? Um, that, oh my gosh, this is a good one too, all right? Um, you need to get over yourself. You need to get over yourself. And you think you need a man or a woman to validate you and your dream to live your dream. I want you to get over yourself, all right? You know I was going to go there, right? All right, the fact of the matter is uh, you need to get over yourself. If you think you need a man or a woman, all right, to validate you and your dream or to live your dream, all right, get over yourself, all right, it's not true, um, and I meet people all the time, in order for them to live their dream, they will say something like, you know, I always dreamed of, you know, you know, maybe, I've always dreamed of, you know, having this guy, six, two, and, you know, tall, dark, and handsome, and, you know, and we have 2.5 kids, and a dog and a cat, don't get me started about the cat, all right, right now, that's a whole nother topic, all right, and, 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 and that's what my idea of happiness looks like, and I want to say you need to get over yourself, and the reason is so many people have this picture of what happiness looks like, and it's not real, all right, and as a result of that, you're living happiness, and you got to understand that, that's your, that's your responsibility, if you want to attract happiness, be happy with you, all right? And it's something I absolutely know is true. Um, the fact of the matter is the moment that you can be 100% happy with who you are, you know, and you might not need anybody else in your world, right, in order for you to be happy, all right? I'm telling you, your life becomes more meaningful and you have the opportunity to inform any relationships that you have about what truly will make you feel happy and fulfilled. I'm just breaking this all the way down. Now, this might be for those of you out here who are my single moms out here. You know what I'm talking about? That sometimes you look at what you got going on and you're so in judgment about what isn't there, who isn't there for you, that you can't see that what you have right now is fabulous. And I, and I want to call you out if that's you and I want to say you need to get over yourself all right or for those of you who maybe are married and you're in a relationship and you keep saying you're waiting for your spouse to say you know what you are uh, uh, no, no. or you're waiting for your spouse to say to you oh babe that's a great dream in order for you to run with it he might not say that yet. You know what I'm saying? It might sound a little crazy right now. All right? And, and you got to understand that you got to get over yourself. You don't need a man or a woman to validate your dream to, for you to go live your dream. All right? And this is for those of you. You guys got to get this. All right? You got to understand this. That so many of us get hung up and stuck around these things talking about we need these other people in our world to show up. And we haven't showed up for ourselves. How about doing that for yourself? I always say, you know, validation is for parking lots. It's not for dreams. It's like like not for dreams, okay? He's not going to say that until he sees the money. My husband thought I was crazy. Okay, I'm telling Patrick that I want to be a mom coach when the words don't exist 13 years ago that I want to support moms. I don't really know how, with what curriculum, how I'm going to use what I'm going to do. He says, I hope somebody pays you, all right? And then you know what? Four years later, he says, you're a freaking genius. Let's take the couch and send it to the Smithsonian and bronze it. All right. So here's the thing. What if I was waiting for Patrick to say, babe, go for it. You know, that's a great dream, dream. Let me pump you up so you can go do it. You guys better stop looking for that shot in the arm and give yourself that shot. I'm just, I'm just breaking it down, all right? And the fact of the matter is that maybe sometimes we lean too hard on the people in our world and expecting them to do the things for us that we need to do for ourselves, all right? If you want to go for that thing, go do that thing, all right? Go rock that thing. And then watch that partner say, you know what? You are amazing. All right? <laughs> You're a genius. All right? Go be a genius. All right? And then, and then watch that all change. Okay? So 
I just wanted to call you out if that's you and say, get over yourself. All right. If that's you, I want you to get over yourself. All right. Stop using that as an excuse. He didn't say anything about it. Right. Come on now. Come on. Like go crush it. Go do it. All right. Number 14. I think this is number 14. All right. Okay. Is this good? Is this good? Who is that? All right. Um, okay. Number 14. All right. The 14th way to get over yourself. Oh goodness. All right. This is good. Let me fan you. Okay. This is a good one too. All right. Number 14 is that, listen, you can do whatever you please without the approval of others. All right. I want you to fall in love with trusting God and yourself. Okay. Um, and so I want you to get over yourself, right? I want you to know that you can do whatever you please without the approval of others, okay? Hear me on this. Without the approval of anyone, okay? You can do that thing, all right? And fall in love, right? There are no rules. I want you to fall in love, okay? In love with God, okay? Because that's where your divine guidance comes from. And as a result of that, you'll be able to trust yourself more, all right? And this idea that, you know, for those of you who maybe you, you think that in order for you to do anything, you need other people to approve of what you're doing, you know, maybe it's because your mom didn't approve of you, or maybe it's because your aunt didn't approve or teacher didn't approve of you or somebody, and you're constantly in search of somebody saying to you, you're okay, you're great. I want you to understand, I want you to fall in love with trusting God. All right. And I want you to know that's where you need to stand. And when you trust God more, okay, you know, and you fall in love with that, you will be able to hear yourself more. I mean, this is flat true. Like if I don't know what, like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about with you guys. This is what I figured out. I'm like, okay, God, what do I need to talk about? <laughs> like, what do I need to talk about? And then I just come up with these topics. I'm number one, number two, you know, I mean, the thing is, you know what I'm saying? Divine guidance is divine guidance. It's always there. It's available to you. It's free. It's love. It's from goodness. It elevates you. All right. It's never going to leave you wrong. It's going to, it's going to always allow you to stand in a strong and amazing place. All right. And the question is always available to you. All right. And the thing is, that's where your power is. All right. And so this idea that there are people in the world that don't want you to hear yourself think, you know what I mean? They want you to say, hey, I'm your source, all right? You know what I'm saying? They want to say, you know, uh-uh, uh-uh, don't listen. All right, read this first. Follow me here. But I want you to understand that trusting yourself has everything to do with falling in love with God and your divine source and knowing that God's not going to leave you. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to fail you. Like, that's not going to happen, all right? And, and, and you know that, all right? And even though we do know this, right, sometimes you have to get over yourself because we think we need the approval of others for us to do the things we want to do. I mean, you think about the number of times that people who have gone for their dreams, it was insanity. Nobody approved. Nobody thought it would make sense, all right? But they had a conversation with God, and they were able to trust themselves as a result of that and execute on those big and great and amazing ideas. And if you're not in conversation with God every day, I just want to, I just want to say you need to get over yourself. All right. And this idea of you trying to lead yourself without something higher than yourself, a, a greater sense of knowing, I'm telling you, it's messing you up. All right. I'm telling you that it, it's the reason why you are where you are confused. All right. Because there is clarity in truth. All right. There, there, there is power in, in a knowing, all right? And I just want you to be able to stand on that thing and get over yourself and understand that if you don't know it, all right? Then you need to go to the source that does, all right? And for me, that's God, and that's what I'm recommending. So that's my scope for today. Ta-da-da! -da. <laughs> all right, let me just recap, right? All right, let me just recap. Let me, for those of you who have just joined me, um, let's see... Um, one second. Uh, for those of you who have just joined me today, I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist. I support clients with both life and business success. You can always check me out at MiaRedrick.com, at MiaRedrick.com, at MiaRedrick.com. Now, if you haven't shared on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Periscope, you, you want to pass the offering plate? Oh, you're so funny. I love you, Angel. Uh, 
uh, if you haven't shared on Twitter or Facebook on Periscope, please do. Um, please share on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Periscope. Come on, guys. Now, you guys all should be sharing. And if you've already shared, you might have to go out and come back in because I think sometimes there's a limitation on the hearts that you can share and things like that, all right? Please share because we know that other people will be blessed by hearing the scope um, to, you know, um, from Periscope. Um, what I share today are 14 ways. 14, yep, 14 ways, thank you so much, 14 ways um, that you need to get over yourself. And I'm just going to read them. Number one is that you're not smart enough, okay? We got this, all right? You know this, all right? Uh, I'm not even going to go there, right? Enough of this already. Stop taking all these classes, these courses, trying to figure out for yourself, you know what I mean? The, you like, Are you ready? Go launch the thing. I need you to do it. Number two is that you were not supported enough. Oh, come on. Please. All right. Create the support you want in your life so that you can realize the things you want in your life. All right. Don't use your life as an excuse. Use it as a reason to do, you know, create the systems you need to be able to accomplish your goals. Number three. All right. That you were not given the same opportunities and you're comparing your lack to what everybody else has. And I want you to stop looking at your world that way. Get over yourself. All right. Number four. Um, that you don't have enough time to do what you love. Right. That you don't have enough time to do what you love. Come on. You got enough time to do what you don't love, all right? You, you're spending all this time doing things you don't love. You mean you can't find time to do what you love, all right? I'm just breaking that all the way down. All right, number number five, that you don't have the right training, you know, to write your book, to launch your courses, and all of those kind of things. And, okay, so you get to say that so that you don't get to invest in that. All right. As if the possibilities don't exist for you, the options are not available to you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Take the blinders off. All right. Get over yourself. All right. You need to step up your game. I, I just want to call you out if that's you. All right. Number six. All right. You don't have enough experience to launch or to break out. All right. Come on. You do, all right? You just got to trust yourself. And I want you to know is that, you know, nobody's going to ring a bell and say, now's the time. You get to say what that is, all right? And I, and I talked about that today. All right, I want you to get over yourself. Number eight is that you can't mastermind or associate at a high level with people because you don't have enough, right? So you're looking at folks that have a little bit more than you or a little further ahead than you, and you get a little uncomfortable, and you start thinking they think they're all that. No, you think they're all that because of your own insecurity. Security. And what I want you to do is get comfortable being in the room with giants, learning to speak their language, all right, being comfortable with that, all right? Number nine is that you need to duplicate others because you're insecure about your own voice. There's nothing creative about duplicating what other people do. And yeah, you can create tremendous success monetarily, but there's a hole that happens inside your heart when you don't trust yourself. So the fact of the matter is, God is giving you amazing gifts and talents. Use them. Stand on them. All right? And I will tell you that you will grow in them. You never have to wonder if you're being you and doing you and acting as you. You never have to figure that out. All right? You don't have to Google search who you're meant to be. Be yourself. All right? Number 10, you have to fight to prove yourself, although you're not in a battle, except with... Um, inadequate demons like in your mind you feel inadequate so you like fighting everybody you know what I mean you're like fighting these people and fighting those folks over there folks don't even know you exist and part of the reason is because you feel inadequate inside yourself so the thing is you, you understand what I'm saying so you can't receive joy or abundance or love or all the great things that are around you because you're so busy scratching and fighting because you've been fighting for 10 years to get there you're gonna show them all of them, okay? What I want you to understand is that you're battling the demon of being inadequate, all right? And I just want to call you out if that is you. Get over yourself, all right? Number 11, number 11 is that you don't have money, right? Um, you know what I mean? Lack has defined uh, what's in front of you. So every time you want to do something to move forward, you know what I mean? You talk about what you don't have. You know what I'm talking about. Every time you want to move forward, you talk about what you don't have, all right? Now, you're not trying to create a way. You're trying to talk about what you don't have, and you use not having as a reason not to move forward. And I want to tell you is that you need to get over yourself and find a new way, like, like find a new way. Find a way, all right, to get what you want. Number 12 is that you need stuff to be loved, accepted, respected, appreciated, or to prove 
who you are and you don't. That's it. Enough said. All right. Get over yourself. All right. You are enough. You're amazing. You're talented. You're brilliant. All right. I want you to own that. Number 13, that you need to get over yourself because you think that you need a man or a woman to validate you and your dream to live your dream. All right. Let me say that again slowly. It's like you think you need a man or a woman right, to validate you and your dream in order for you to live your dream. Mm -mm. You can live your dream right now. You don't need anyone else to be in your world to say your dream is amazing on the be with you on the beaches to enjoy the beach. Uh-uh, that's called a story. Figure out how to, how, how to enjoy it right now, you with you, all right? And if you can't do it you with you, you're not gonna be happy you with anybody else anyway. You don't need anything. Right, you have everything that you need. Any any relationship that we have, it enhances what is already inside of us. I'm just calling it all the way out. All right, number fourteen, that you can have, you can do what you please without the approval of others. I want you to fall in love with trusting you, and I I, I want you to know that. The more you trust God, the more you're in relationship with God, the more you're going to be able to trust you and you're going to be able to stand on that. Now, as I promised, that was the recap for today. As I promised, I'll open the floor up for any questions. For those of you who are like, hey, Mia, wait a minute, this was a lot. And I would love, love, love to figure out how I could work with you as my coach. All right. So here's the deal. Uh, I work with people smart, sharp, they believe in self-investment, and they believe in God. They are ready to get it done, action takers, go-getters, and they believe in investing in themselves. Yes, yes, okay, that's that's it, all right? If you're interested in booking a strategy session with me, which in essence is 20 to 30 minutes, where I will coach you, right? And we can figure out together whether or not it's a fit, whether I'm a fit for you and my programs, and whether or not... You know, um, you're fit for me, all right? You can go to bit.ly, bit, B-I-T dot Lee forward slash strategy with Mia. Bit.ly forward slash strategy with Mia, all right? Bit, B-I-T dot Lee forward slash strategy with Mia, all right? If we're not already connected on Facebook, Mia Redrick, The Mom Strategist, this is my page over there, so make sure you connect with me there, Mia Redrick, The Mom Strategist, Mia Redrick, The Mom Strategist, and my website is MiaRedrick.com, you can always sign up for my email list there and get some great goodies, all right, MiaRedrick.com, Mia, M-I-A, Redrick.com, all right, I want to open the floor up, if there are any questions, um, I'd love to answer those. But right now, I'd like to know, what was your aha? Um, what was something that you learned here today that you're like, mm, that was good? All right, if if you had an aha, a lesson, something that really stood out for you, I would love for you to post it here so that I can see that you got it, that, that you were you wanted to receive and you got it, all right? I don't need a man to be happy. You don't, all right? And I'm glad that you got that, right? And that happiness starts from within, right? Um, so I love that you got that. Anyone else have any other ahas, anything else that you got as a result of being here? If you haven't shared on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Periscope, please do. I might leave this up. I might try to leave this one up for, maybe I'll leave it up for 24 hours because it's so good. Um, I'll leave it up for 24 hours for those of you. Brilliant scope. Thank you. You're welcome, Colleen. Thank you so much. All right. Um, see, this is what happens when I work out, when I clean and I got a cat out back. Um, I really am ready. T time to launch. Awesome. All right. That's right. I'm ready. You're t it's time to launch. All right. Were there any other ahas? It was all gold. All right. What was your favorite? Um, what was your favorite? Um, what did you guys learn on the scope today? Tell me what was something that was impactful for you? Like, you're like, whoo, that was for me, right? Because you had, you had you in mind, you know what I'm saying? I was thinking, like, I wanted to make sure that I came on here today and I did what I needed to do. All right. And also don't let my nine to five be an excuse to not have time to work on my entrepreneurial pursuits. Absolutely. Uh, that's right, Colleen. Get over yourself, right? Absolutely. And it's important because sometimes we stop believing these things that, that like bind us and keep us from doing the things that we were intended to do. And if that's you, I just kind of wanted to call it out today. 
and hopefully, you know, it'll be that change, that jolt that you need. They'll make all the difference, all right? Um, are there any, anyone else want to share? If there are any questions for me, I'm happy to answer any questions over the next couple of minutes. Being the true you, all right, is God in you. Absolutely. Too busy to do what you love. Like, are you kidding me? Who's too busy to do what they love to do? Like, right, your amazing dream. You too busy to do that? Come on now. Shatan, this was an amazing scope. I hope you were here. I'm going to leave it up. I got to make sure I tell my guy to keep it up. All right, for 24 hours, because this was like a firecracker scope. This might be my best scope of all times. I don't know. Um, all right, fall in love with trusting God. Like, how about that? Like, fall in love with trusting God, all right? And then, you know, everything becomes clear from that, all right? Were there any other uh, any other ahas or lessons um, today? Any other, any, other, any other ahas or lessons today, all right? Um, I want to thank you for your time. Are there any questions on the floor? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Are there any other questions on the floor? Any other comments? Wow, I just got here. Oh, you're going to love this one. Now, Shatan, this, is, this was a really good scope. I think this is, might be one of my favorite scopes of all times. This might be my favorite one of all times. I think so. I'm not just saying it. It was really good. All right. Um, don't need the approval of others, right? You don't need the approval of others to launch what is best for you. Like, it's a really, really, really it, it, powerful thing to understand that. All right. And um, and we have to do that for ourselves, right? So, so, so important. And, um, you know, thank you so much for sharing that and for getting that, uh, for receiving that. It's really important. You know, it's hearing, but then also receiving, Right is what allows us to be able to execute on those things, create a change in our life. If you can hear it, you can't receive it, then it just like goes, boom, like that, right? So the thing is, it's like hear it and then breathe it in. Like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my husband is right. You repeated what he told me. It's confirmation. Awesome. Your husband's a wise man. All right, awesome. Um, I think I told right. okay. Oh, that's so funny. I don't know. I have no idea. What you need to do. All right. Anyone else? Uh, any other questions? Any other questions or comments? Any other questions or comments? All right. Um, the floor is open. Any other questions? Happy to answer any question. All right. Uh, I think the cat may have contributed. Right. Oh, my goodness, cat. You guys don't even know what's going on with this thing. That's not. All right. Okay. Um, you know, I. Um, we. Basically, we're rescuing a cat, okay, that I thought we were going to rescue the cat, take the cat to be rescued to a rescue home my friend has. But somehow in the process, I've got, I've now bought a, you know, a litter box for the cat. I bought cat food for the cat. I'm taking the cat to the vet tomorrow. So I think we're keeping this cat, right? I think I'm getting the cat spaded and neutered, spaded or neutered tomorrow. And... I think I'm keeping this cat. That's what I think is happening. And it's slowly um, and it's slowly happening. Okay? <laughs> the kids are in love with the cat. The dog loves the cat. My husband loves the cat. All right? So I think I'm I, I think that's what's happening. All right? We're going to I'm going to have I'm going to have a cat and a dog. All right? And I didn't know that. It, uh, I didn't know that on Monday. But that's what's happening right now. All right. Is that, uh, isn't this funny? You know, Shaitan, you know how your kids do it. You know what happens to us, right? They're like falling in love with the cat. I was like, how is this possible? Right? This, is, this was not part of the plan. Um, okay. Anyone else? Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right. Okay. All right, so I want to thank you guys for coming today. This was a great scope, and uh, I, I love the cat symbol there. Colleen, that's so funny. Colleen, we've got it's cute cat, it's white cat. One eye is blue, one eye is brown, and I'm sure you guys will get to see this cat at some point. And uh, this is so now we have a cat, right? And they've named the cat Mahalia. The cat's named Mahalia. You know, my dog is named Mick. So we've got Eminem, Mick, and Mahalia. Although this is a cat that I didn't know we were, we were going to have as a pet. My husband and I both felt the same way. All right. So that's so funny. <laughs>
<laughs> no being right. Thank you so much, right? No being, we thank being right. No, no, I thank you. I appreciate you guys. Um, so um, for those of you who are just joining, please um, watch the replay. I'll keep it up. I'll keep it up for at least 24 hours. And I am Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist. If you're not connected with me on Facebook, Mia Redrick, the mom strategist. Mia Redrick, the mom strategist. If you um, uh, go to my website, you want to get some great downloads, uh, miaredrick.com, miaredrick.com. We give away some pretty cool goodies there. Um, and if you are interested in um, booking a 20-minute strategy session with me, because you're thinking about investing in a coach, um, R-E-D-R-I-C-K, um, you're thinking of working with a coach, then go to bit.ly forward slash strategy with Mia bit.ly forward slash strategy with Mia. All right. And there you can book a 20 minute, 30 minute strategy session. I'm going to coach you around what it is that, how we can take what you are doing, leverage what you know, package your gifts and talents into a product that you can service the world with. But I also believe your life informs your business. So we're going to create models that are congruent with your life, right? So if you're into that, then I'd love, love, love to support you if you're thinking about investing in working with a coach, all right? Um, outside of that, I am done, guys. Like, this has been a long scope, and I want to thank you for your time. I appreciate you. I hope you can tune in tomorrow morning. Thank you so much. Hope you can tune in tomorrow morning. Thank you for putting that there. You guys can screenshot that link. Um, thank you, Shatan. I'll be doing my gym scope tomorrow morning. Um, and so always, it's always inspirational. I couldn't get my periscope to work this morning. So I did my gym scope on Facebook on my Mia Redrick, the mom strategist page. And I talked about, just so you guys know, I talked about the right equipment. That was the title on this morning. It was called the right equipment. And I've lost 29 pounds. And so I wore my old gym, um, my gym pants to the gym today. So I couldn't jog, I couldn't run because my pants kept sliding down. And so I was talking about how, you know, you could be in the right place doing the right thing with the right intentions. But if you don't have the right equipment, you know what I'm saying? If you don't have the right equipment, you can't do what you want to do. All right. And I think a lot of us never think about that. That's what I talked about today. You guys can pop over to Mia Redrick, the mom strategist and, uh, and see, see that short scope. Um, if you like, all right, I'll talk to you soon. Have a great and amazing night. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.